Hey, Wood Fam, it's Leo with One Happy Widow. And today I'm talking about I'm going to therapy. So I know that um, if you've watched my videos in the past, you've seen how <clears throat> I don't want to say I poo poo therapy, but. Um, and I'm not saying that I don't think it's helpful because I definitely think there is a place for therapy for seeing a psychologist or a counselor or something like that. And, you know, different people have different needs. Different people are in different places in their grieving process and things like that. So um, I went to therapy one time when I was you know, probably a year or two into grief and I was just feeling real overwhelmed. And I went to one session. And the person I was talking to, really nice, but probably in her mid-20s, maybe late 20s. Not even sure if she's married, don't know if she had kids. But, you know, she's telling me, like, these obvious things to do. And I don't feel like she could empathize with me, for, with my grief and what I was actually, like, the gravity of what I was actually going through. And I just I couldn't take her um, suggestions very seriously because I didn't feel like they were very genuine. And on top of that, all she did was say, well, if you feel overwhelmed, you just got to stop and break things down into smaller pieces. And I was like, well, I could have called my mom for free and got that same advice because she's been telling me that since I was a kid. So it was real generalized. Now, maybe if I'd continued to see her, I might have developed like a relationship and maybe she would have been able to give me some coping mechanisms and things like that. But at the time, what I really needed was, you know, some some feedback from somebody about this is what you can expect what you're going through is normal um, it'll it'll pass here are some things that you can do to help that help it pass and I, I didn't feel like I was getting really that kind of support now my kids have been in therapy and it's doing great for them their brains are still developing they're still trying to learn coping mechanisms on how to deal with their grief and other issues in life and so I do think that therapy for them has been vital so I'm not saying therapy is all good or all bad I'm just saying up to this point I have not utilized therapy for myself um, the only therapy that I've been to besides that one session is I've gone to a psychiatrist a few times to get some medication and you know I only got I got this as needed stuff it was probably three years ago I think I've taken it three times, <laughs> you know, like just knowing that it's there, you know, for like, if I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack, just knowing that I have that, um, it was nice, but honestly, I can get the same kind of relief from taking a Benadryl or from taking uh, CBD. Um, but here I am at this point and I'm about to talk about therapy. Oh, JP and I have gone to some, some marriage therapy, but, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's been helpful for us or not either. So we're kind of on the fence about whether we want to keep going or not. We're not on the verge of divorce or anything. It's just we're trying to make sure that we have as healthy of a chance for our marriage to, you know, to last and succeed as possible. So I don't know if we're getting anything out of that, but that's besides the point. So I'm at this point now where it's not really the grief or the primary grief that is affecting me. And I did a video about this a few weeks back. So you can search on the channel about secondary loss and secondary grief. And it talks, you know, I talk about how, you know, on the, on the fresh level, on the primary level, you've lost your person. And so you have to deal with that grief and that's immediate. That is, you know, that affects a lot of us in very similar ways, physically, mentally, emotionally. And then there's secondary loss and secondary grief. That affects people a lot differently depending on the role of the person that you lost. So if it's a person that's in your immediate family, somebody that you lived with, your life, the, all the other things about your life have changed so much, not just dealing with the grief. And so that is what, to me, just kind of lingers and hangs in there and doesn't really go away as much. And it's something that you know, you really have to learn how to cope with. Once I discovered a name for it and I put a label to it, I was like, oh, this is why I'm still struggling. I'm almost five years out. I'm still struggling sometimes. And I'm like, I'm not struggling in a way like I cry every day. I'm not struggling in a way like I can't get out of bed because I'm so depressed and I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. It's not that kind of struggling. It's more executive functioning. 
which is a huge thing with people with ADHD, and I have that. And that's basically like figuring out how to take care of your day-to-day -day life skills. And I think I was coping pretty well just as a person, as a grown-up, until Dewey died. And then that grief, I think, set off this, you know, first it was the primary grief, and now it's the secondary losses, and now it's like it's still hanging in there, and it's the longevity of it. It's the, um, the constants of it. And on top of that, it's the ADHD that I have. And so it's like I was hanging by a thread, I guess you could say, until he died. And then I went over this threshold to where I feel like I'm having trouble managing my life just in a general sense. And so I can't really say it's because of the grief specifically. So I'm not going to therapy to help me, you know, learn how to deal with my grief. <laughs> I'm going to therapy because I need to learn how to live a normal, productive life without being overly stressed by things that shouldn't overly stress me. So, um, and to be honest, I don't even know if it's possible. <laughs> so I guess that's where the therapist's job comes in. Um, and as a matter of fact, it's the therapist that's been seeing my kids and I was texting with her and um, I did another video on brain widow's fog, you know, widow's brain where I was forgetting a bunch of stuff and I had been forgetting a lot of the kids therapy appointments and finally I texted her and I said, I am so sorry. I am not taking their therapy lightly, but I keep missing their appointments and I'm just like, I can't keep anything straight. Like I, I can't keep my mind straight. My mind is all over the place and I am so sorry. And she was like, no problem. I know you're not taking it serious. Uh, you're not taking it lightly. She said, but maybe you should consider therapy for yourself. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. well, I was like, maybe, I don't know. I don't, I still don't know if therapy is what I need or if therapy is actually going to help me, but you know, I'm willing to give it a try because I'm trying it on my own, um, the best I can. And it's just not like, it's not working. You know what I mean? It's just there's something there that's like not allowing me to fully move forward at a regular pace, I guess. I'm not stuck in grief. I'm not, you know, I'm not like, I don't know how I'm going to live. It's not depression. It's just, it's coping. It's like I'm struggling to cope. I feel like I'm juggling and I can't, like I can't juggle all the balls and I feel I have this fear that I'm going to drop one and as soon as I drop one, I'm going to drop them all. So I have some notes and I'm going to go over and just talk about, you know, some of the issues that I'm dealing with and if I think that therapy is, might help me. And then along the way, you know, if I continue to go on a regular basis, then I will kind of go back in with you and kind of update you and let you know if I'm still going, if it's helping me and that kind of thing. All right. Um, like I said, it's helped my kids a lot. And they just kind of go to as a maintaining kind of a thing. You know, they just go every week and it just maintains a certain level and they have different little things of homework that they do and they actually like going. And so we just keep going. Um, so some of the things, some of the secondary losses that are really affecting me now and affecting the children that I think are causing me to want to go to therapy is, um, you know, the kids are missing out on a lot of, the kids' dad is missing out on a lot of, their experiences so it's just hitting home to me that like they're growing up they're going through all these milestones and he's not there and they're starting to forget like my youngest one is really starting to forget and it's upsetting her a lot because she was only seven when he died she's 12 now and you know she she recognizes pictures of him obviously but her memories are are sketchy at best and it's really it's hurting her a lot and it affects me because it makes me really sad that she doesn't get to have that chance, you know, for her dad to see any of her milestones. Um, the therapist that I'm uh, going to see, she treats my kids and so she knows them. And so she knows the family dynamic. So she already kind of knows their personality, what kind of, I don't want to say issues that I'm dealing with, but if I mention like my son does this and it bothers me, she, she in her mind is going to be like, yeah, I've seen those behaviors in him. I know exactly what you're talking about. So I think that it will help her because she'll kind of have a, you know, uh, a glimpse of what the big picture is with our family dynamics. 
Um, I know this shouldn't be as much of an issue as it is, but it is free. So um, it's it's a Christian-based, faith-based. It's under the umbrella of our church, um, and it doesn't cost anything. There's a waiting list to get in, and it's a long, you know, it's hard to get appointments, but they they operate on donations. Now, I do donate to them. Every month I have automatic money coming out of my account to go to them, but it's not anywhere near what it would be if I was paying for services. And in addition, it's right next door to our house. Like it's literally next door to our house. So a lot of times um, <laughs> my son will just walk home when he's done. And so um, it's like a quarter of a mile just right over on the other side of the fence. So it doesn't really get much more convenient. If it's right there where you could walk and it's free, it's kind of like, well, why not give it a try at least and just, you know, give it a chance and see if it will help. The problem is I have I have a great ability to make plans and plan things out, but I don't, I don't execute the plans very well. And so, um, like the last thing I want is just to get another list of plans of what to do and then go through these lists. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. <sighs> um, anything's got to get better, right? It's got to be better than what it is right now. Like I'm not saying my whole life sucks. I'm just saying I'm struggling, you know, to to get get my shit together and yeah so I need some help I need some support and I'm reaching out I'm trying to you know I'm trying to put my pride away and put my type A personality away and and just put my guard down and say I can't do this you know I can but like I'm struggling so maybe if I could get some support or some help I wouldn't struggle so much so you know I'm gonna give this a try so one of the and one of the main reasons why I'm going is to help me know how to support my family through the grief and possibly how to let go of some of the struggles that I'm holding on to on their behalf. I think I'm holding on to everybody's grief. Like I I feel like I'm carrying the burden of my grief. I'm carrying the burden of JP's grief. For his wife this is a tough month for him because she died um, in April and a week later he buried her on his birthday and so April is a tough month and right now he's struggling because Sunday is Easter and that is the three-year anniversary of her death so he's struggling um, I'm trying to be there to help him but it's a little difficult because sometimes he accepts my help and then other times he he kind of lashes out a little bit and um, you know just sort of puts on like a harsh exterior and so it's a little hard to reach him and so right now I'm just kind of giving him some space but like I feel like I'm carrying the burden of my grief of his grief of the kids grief on top of that the kids struggles with their holding all their shit together and so um, I'm trying not to enable them too much because I'm trying to get them grown and like on their own and out of the house um, it's costing me a lot of money, you know, to help them financially. And I'm trying to, you know, what do you call that? Cut the apron strings. I'm having a hard time. I'm having a lot of guilt. And I can remember um, about, I don't know, a year ago or so. And I was thinking about my life in my mind. I asked a question and said, you know, if it wasn't for all the struggles that my family members are having around me and the people who live in my house, what other problems am I having? And I couldn't think of a single one. This was before I changed jobs and came to work at home. But like my job was good. My car was good. My money was good. Um, you know, my my grief was in check. My health was good. And I'm like, I don't have any issues myself. But everybody else around me, their life is a dumpster fire. And I am over there trying to put everybody's fires out. And everybody's looking to me like help me help me help me what are you gonna do how, how can you help me and I'm like I can't help everybody not only that I cannot solve their problems but I still feel responsible for it I still feel like this heavy weight and this heavy burden and I'm like I don't know how to let that go like because it seems like the only way to let it go is to just say I don't care about you I don't care about your pain I don't care about your struggles so I don't really know how to like let go of it without feeling like I am relinquishing my support for them. 
I have people who contact me who watch these videos and I love to help people. But then there's some times when people, you know, they will email me multiple times back and forth, almost like they're, they're seeing me as their counselor. And they'll ask me questions and I try to remain real neutral because I'm not a counselor. So I don't really want to tell somebody like what exactly to do, but I'll say, well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? And maybe this and maybe that. And I try to just, you know, put out some ideas. Then they come back. Well, what about this? What should I do? I don't know what to do. Where do I turn? What do I do? Where do I go? And I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know you. I don't know what all your issues are. I know, you know, like a, five sentence email that you sent me. That's all I know about your situation in your life and the fact that you're widowed and that's it. So, and I don't want to just say, well, I can't help you go see a doctor. Like, I don't want to do that either. But anyway, it's just, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of pressure on me to, I feel like I have to have like save the world or help everybody. And I'm thinking, and when I was, when I asked that question, I was like, wow, except for everybody else's problems, my life is great. Well, now my life is not great. So on top of all those other issues where I was trying to carry everybody else's grief, now I'm having issues myself. Um, you know, my thyroid medicine's not working like it needs to be. So I'm having some physical symptoms. I'm having hives or I'm breaking out in hives and I don't know if I'm allergic to something or if it's just from stress. I have a feeling it's from stress. I'm having to take Benadryl. The Benadryl makes me really tired and sleepy and drowsy and really hard to like wake me up. Um, I switched, you know, switched jobs in January so I could work from home and I thought it would be fine. I hate, you hear me? Hate it. I hate this job. The only thing I like about it is the kids, teaching the kids and interacting with the kids and that's it. All the rest of it, the paperwork, the people who are over me, the HR people and the benefits, like it is the most poorly run <laughs> um, organization that I've ever worked for in my life. Like there's been times we haven't gotten paid on time and they messed up my insurance. I don't have any health insurance because they didn't put my insurance in. Like it's been, it's been ridiculous. It makes me really angry too. So I, I can't return to this job. I have five more weeks of this job and it could not end any sooner because I cannot wait to finish this job. I hate it. So I haven't hated a job like this in a while. <laughs> so, and it's, you know, it's eight hours a day. So I'm sitting here in front of this computer doing this job that I hate and I just want it to end. I also thought that I was going to be able to quit teaching and I was going to be able to focus all my attention on this and then growing my other business, my crafting stuff. And just a lot of things have happened and I just, I'm not going to be able to afford to not, you know, to give up that paycheck. So now I'm on a, I'm on a job hunt. I had an interview yesterday. I have an interview on Monday. I have a job that I really want, but then there's a couple of other jobs that I'm not really sure that I want, but they've already offered to me. So I'm having a hard time figuring out where I'm going to teach next. And I'm hoping it's only for another year, but I don't even know. Like I'm burned out on teaching, you know, in the public school system. There's a lot of politics involved that I don't agree with and et cetera, et cetera. And it's really, I'm having a hard time with that. Um, I'm having a hard time with motivation. I'm, I'm tired all the time. Um, it probably has to do with me not eating as well. Um, I've been trying to be on this diet, but sometimes I just don't eat enough. And, you know, there's a lot of other issues. I need to start moving a little more, but I'm stuck behind this computer for 12 hours a day and it's really hard for me to get up and move. Um, so yeah, so my widow's fog, I talked about widow's fog recently in a video about how bad it has been like in the last couple of weeks or whatever. And I keep waiting for it to clear and it's not like I had therapy yesterday. JP and I had marriage, marriage counseling yesterday at five o'clock and I've known about it for days and thought about it and thought about it several times that day and then just lost track of time. And it was supposed to be at five o'clock and 542. I looked down and it was 542 and we missed therapy again. So like I I, I feel like I'm going, you know, I don't want to say going crazy, but like, I just feel like I'm losing control of my, you know, my life. It sounds really bad when I say it that way. Like I am losing the ability to have this amount of control in my life that I am comfortable with. Does that make sense? So, um, you know, I'm just feeling a little bit too much of chaos. I don't like chaos in my life and I feel like I've had nothing but chaos for the past five years and I'm like I'm ready for it to calm down and just be like simple I don't know that it ever will be but like I need it to be 
So I don't know what to do to make that happen because everything in my life I feel like has to be done. Like I can't just stop parenting my kids. I'm tired of parenting. Honestly, I've been parenting for 24 years and I'm tired of it. And like, I feel like I need a break, but I can't just give my kids away. <laughs> like I care about them and I love them, but like I am tired. So I'm tired of working. I'm tired of teaching. I'm tired of working a job I don't like. I'm tired of working for money that I feel like I'm worth more money. Um, I'm tired of fighting with people. I'm tired of giving a lot of my money away to other people who don't have it and need to figure out a way to go get it. Like, I feel like I'm being used. <sighs> There's a lot of, I don't know, is that anger? Is that resentment? Is that bitterness? I don't know. And I feel like maybe it's because I'm here, you know, I'm raising kids without a dad and that's making it really hard for me. Um, and... So that's pretty much it. Like I'm, you know, I feel like I'm juggling about 95 balls in the air and that people keep throwing balls at me and nobody's taking balls from me. And so I'm juggling and I'm juggling and I'm juggling and I feel like, or I'm spinning plates, you know, I'm going by, I'm spinning plates and it's, you've seen people spin plates. As soon as those plates start falling, they all kind of just fall. And so I feel like that's where I am. And I guess I just am finally breaking down and saying, I can't figure out how to organize my life or arrange my life or, you know, prioritize. Maybe my priorities are in a different place or something. I don't know. I don't want to go out and just get a bunch of medication. Um, I've thought about that. I was like, maybe I just need some medication, but I don't like prescription medication. I will take it. Uh, if it's the last resort, but I would like to try other things first. Like I don't want to just jump straight to meds when I think I have a problem. I would rather do other things first and say, well, I've tried this and I've tried this and I've tried this. None of these have worked. So now let's maybe try the medication. So I'm not there yet. Um, and plus I think medication, you know, just masks, it's a temporary fix. It just masks the symptoms, but it doesn't take away the actual issue and it doesn't take away the source of the issue. And so once you start taking it, if you don't fix the source of what's causing it, you're just going to be taking it forever. And I don't want that. I don't want the side effects. So I'm going to try it. And I know it's going to take more than just one or two, you know, like I don't even get to go in until May something, the first or second week of May for intake so they can get all my paperwork done. And then after that, I'm going to start probably in the summer. And then it'll probably be weekly until I get a hold of things and then maybe every other week. And so um, I'll, you know, let you come along on the journey with me. But like, I feel like I've tried everything that I can try on my own. And um, and it's not like I'm failing completely. It's just that it's, it seems like there's never enough time in the day. There's never enough energy for me. I never get enough sleep. I never like I'm feeling hungry a lot. And that's not I know I've been on a diet, but usually when I go on this diet, I usually can feel satisfied with the amount of stuff that I'm eating. And when I get my cravings out of my body, I usually feel better. I haven't been reaping those benefits as much and my weight hasn't come off as quickly as I would have liked. And I think it's from the stress. And so um, just I'm trying to figure out because it seems like the things I need to do to make my life less stressful are adding things to my life that make it more stressful. <laughs> like, oh, you need to walk 10,000 steps a day. Well, when the hell am I supposed to do that? <laughs> like, that's just another activity to add to my 7,000 activities for the day. So I'm sure I will reap benefits from it, but where do I squeeze that part in? What do I take out of my life so I can put that part in its place so that I can reap the benefits of getting these 10,000 steps every day? I don't, I'm trying, it's like Jenga, right? What can you pull out? without your whole tower falling. Which Jenga block can I take out? And I can't figure that out. I feel like I need to simplify, but I don't know what part to give up. The parts that I want to give up are parts that I can't give up. Like I want to take a break from parenting. That, may, that sounds make, makes me sound like a bad mom. I'm not trying to say I don't love my kids or I don't want them anymore. I'm just saying like, I really need a parenting break and I can't get one because you don't get parenting breaks. Right. So that's not an option for me. So I really want to quit my job because it's it's a pisser for me. I don't like it. And so that means eight hours of my day. I'm unhappy and it's affecting the rest of my 16 hours of my rest of my day. Um, but I can't afford to quit. I need the money. 
So maybe when I switch jobs, it'll be a little better. But like, I really just don't want to work for someone else. But I can't afford not to right now. So I'm a little bitter about that. So anyway, those are my issues. And I'm finally just breaking down. I'm going to go start going to therapy. And I will let you know how it goes. If it helps, then maybe I'll learn some tricks and things or some tactics or something that I can pass along to you that might help you. Um, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. I have to go in and try, though. I'm going to try to go in with an open mind and see how it goes. So thanks for joining me today. That's going to be it for this week, and we will see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to join our Facebook group. I have the link in the um, description below. Don't forget to get your free journal pages. I'll have, a, I'll have a link down there for that. And if you're ready to pivot, if you're ready to pivot from grief to growth, and you're ready to get to that point where you're stop, you don't want to cry every day, and you want to try to start moving forward with your life, the pivot course was for you. I will put the links to those in the um, description below as well. So all the goodies are going to be down there just ready to be clicked on. Okay, so go down there and explore. And until then, I will see you next time. See ya. Bye.